So I really wanted to return to kind of an old world colonization game where everyone starts off in Europe, Asia, or Africa, but this time we're using a lot more modded sieves, we're using a different map, as well as I've had a lot of experience now running the AI only battle, so I know the tweaks that need to be made to make sure it's very entertaining. The other thing I really like about this scenario is kind of figuring out which sieve is going to colonize Australia, South America, and North America. But anyways, let's go ahead and look over the contestants this time around. We are using a different map, and I know this map is not super accurate, but the reason why I like it a lot is that it increases Europe's size. Uh, obviously, Europe is the most uh, condensed area with all these different sieves, so it's always let it's always made the Europeans a little bit weaker. Um, because there's just so many. I have removed two Europeans, that is Venice and the Celts, because they never do that well anyways. Um, but I have made up for it. We are using all four, well, we're using 42 sieves, we're not using all of them. Now normally there's only, I think, 35 sieves that naturally start off in uh, the old world, but I've included mods. So we have a, and like I said, Europe is, is more, uh, is bigger than normal. So that should help out, uh, but we have also, even though, because Africa's huge, we've included mods inside of Africa. So the Boyer, uh, Congo, Ashanti, and Mali are just a few that will be included, as well as the tweaks that I've made to the map, because, you know, I mean, it's it's fine that they do this, um, but they use, there's usually way too many luxury and strategic resources inside of Africa anyways, and I get that. I know that's like a realistic standpoint, but that just makes it even worse for the Europeans and anyone else even, um, kind of the, the, the civs in East Asia as well to catch up, because there's just so many resources here that they don't ever have to leave, and, and then they just start to... Uh, you know, they start to snow snowball. So I have uh, removed some of the luxury and strategic resources to make Africa a bit more... I don't know. I think I think we're going to see the closest regional game we've ever had so far in a world campaign. Of course, we have the Middle East, and the other modded civs that I have included is Afghanistan, Tibet, and then we have Champa, the Philippines, and Vietnam, which should make uh, Eastern Asia, because I'm sure they're going to colonize this region up. They're probably going to go up north, uh, because, of course, we have Indonesia down in the south. So, uh, And then, obviously, Korea, China, and uh, Mongolia. So, yeah, I'm, inter I'm very interested to see exactly how all this, because this is going to be another very con very impacted uh, part of the map now, where we I have included a lot more, and, and the, the map is, is smaller, so that will make things more fun. The colonization should be interesting. Uh, seeing where these civs are going to have to place down their second, third, fourth cities will be entertaining. Also, I can't wait to see uh, possibly the Huns, Russia, and Mongolia battle, battle it out because there's a lot less room. Before, I've always wanted to see kind of a Russian, Hun, Mongolian war. Mainly, that's the Huns, Mongolia, because they are the most aggressive civs in this campaign. I've always wanted to see what it'd be like if they battled it out. Uh, and I think that's actually a realistic scenario uh, that might happen here. But anyways, that might happen again, of course, just like always. If you guys uh, leave a comment in the section below telling me what civ you think is going to win, uh, I will give you a shout out at the end of the video if you pick right. Uh, at the end of the series, I should say, if you pick right. In terms of my vote, and, and, and just, just to like... Let you guys know. Just pick the the name of the of the nation. Don't pick like the leader because I just search the name. So and, and just make sure you get the uh, the name right. So you know Austria. If it's Austria, you know try to spell it correctly. France, England, the Netherlands, Rome, Spain. Uh, anyways. In terms of my pick here, I, I've got to say, and then before I continue onward, I do want to just mention the mods. Uh, this is another reason why I think this campaign is going to be more successful than the previous world campaigns, is because I am using the aggressive and expansive AI mod, uh, which we've seen is really, really useful and, and really helpful to kind of uh, pushing the AI into more wars, as well as the smarter AI mod, which uh, helps for them to make slightly smarter decisions. Don't get me wrong, these still do dumb things, uh, but they, they end up building less of the units that they... Uh, that they don't need, I guess. Uh, we're playing on Emperor difficulty as well. Is it? It's a domination only victory. Now I'm doing that because, and I'm not gonna go all the way till the very end of the campaign. I'm not gonna have uh, the series go all the way until there's only one civ left or, or one civ with all the capitals. Uh, I find this entertaining because it pushes the AI even more into war, where they don't focus as much on science and cultural victories. Um, so that is why I like doing domination only, and uh, and I, it, it just makes for even more wars, which is what is really entertaining about these. AI only battles. Uh, no civ ra city raising, no barbarians, no ancient ruins, and quick and uh, quick combats and movements. 
Uh, but yeah, so we will choose the winner like we've chosen in the previous campaigns, and I actually like that a lot more. Uh, it kind of allows us, because I, I'm not going to lie, in previous series, when I've had an AI-only battle and someone just barely squeezes out a science victory, like it's not as entertaining uh, to, to, you know, to end the campaign early with a science victory or something like that. This way, we get to choose the winner. You know what I mean? We can all kind of vote, and we can look at uh, the info addicts, which I'm also including as, as one of the mods that I'll be using for this series. Uh, we can look at the info addicts, we can look at the categories, we can look at the cities, and that's what I'm probably leaning towards is we will just kind of look at the amount of cities, the amount of capitals. Uh, we'll look into the categories and the info addicts and try to determine a winner from there. But for now, uh, let's go over some of the, uh, you know, the basic sort of knowledge I think we've all learned from these AI-only series is, is the first 100 turns is about colonization. There's no wars that are going to break out, not until about, I'm going to guess, well, there's a lot of civs that are close to each other. So I'm guessing we might see a war as early as maybe turn like 60, maybe turn 70. Uh, that is my guess, though. Um, but we uh, we will mainly see a lot of colonization, which is going to be a big deal. So uh, what, one thing I wanted to mention is I, I, I think that... Japan might have a, a very good chance of doing really well because in this map mod we have the Japanese mainland really, really close to North America. And I like that because it will it will give the Eastern Asian uh, civs a lot of a better a lot better chance of colonization. Uh, I always didn't like that they really didn't have a chance. This time, I mean, I, I'm honestly I'm thinking Eastern Asia is is the place to maybe uh, put your put your vote in. Because these civs have a lot of room for now, I and mean, it all really depends on what the, the civs in the south do. Uh, again, they're going to be reaching up north and trying to grab some of these lands. But if, if I had to choose, I mean, it is a domination only. I, I'm leaning towards China. The only problem with China is that they're so close to Mongolia. And obviously that's a big problem. You don't want to be that close to Mongolia because that is an extremely aggressive civ. Uh, and, and not only, there, there's, it's, it's a domination only. So that means that everyone is going to be kind of building units and trying to, you know, the AI recognizes that there's only one victory type, so they will uh, designate their strategy to be going for, to, to go for that certain method or whatever it is. So uh, if, if China survives, I could see them being successful, but at the same time, maybe not so much. Korea, I don't think is going to have much of a place to colonize, except for the north and in this tundra, and that's not going to be super useful. I, I really think that Japan could have their best game ever. Um, Japan is safe on their mainland. They have to, you know, somewhat watch for the island-based civs like the Philippines and Indonesia, um, but they'll be okay for now. Of course, they have Mount Fuji, which is going to give them two gold, three culture, and three faith, uh, so they might get themselves up a religion sometime soon, but uh, we'll have to see. I am I think I might put my money on Japan here. Uh, now, Japan doesn't really have the best unique ability. They don't really have the best... I mean, they've got the Samurais. Uh, those are pretty good unique units, but... You know, their unique ability isn't super strong. We'll see. Uh, I, I think that it's you can never count out any of the nations from Africa. And as well as, I mean, this is probably the best time to choose a European because there is so much more land than ever before. Uh, in, in previous maps, it's like, boom, the Europeans can just get down their capital and then that's it. If they're lucky, they can get down a second city. Uh, I could see a lot where I, I could definitely see a lot of cities, a lot of civs, if, if, they're, if they're fast here with getting out that first, second, maybe even third settler, I mean, they can, they can easily get four or five cities right in the heart of Europe, which would be a big deal. Now, some of the tweaks that I talked about in the intro that I do uh, that I found makes the game a little bit more entertaining is uh, I remove some of the mountains. Uh, you know, I, 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 not only do I tweak the luxury resources like in continents where they're super, there's just way too much like, you know, luxury resources. I took a lot from, I took a lot out of Africa um, because it was just crazy how much they had in Africa compared to Europe and Asia. Um, I left North and, and South America alone, alone but uh, I also take out mountains because mountains... The AI just cannot comprehend mountains. I mean, they just do terrible with mountains. It, and, it, and it just sucks when a sieve is near mountains because they'll never get taken over because the AI is just incompetent of, of kind of maneuvering amount, around uh, these kind of unpassable tiles. So, uh, do, so I do remove mountains. I put hills in, the place, in, in their place. Uh, the only place that I kept mountains in are the Himalayas. I mean, you got to understand there. Uh, that's kind of a crucial source for someone like Afghanistan and Tibet and well mainly Tibet but uh, Afghanistan will be able to also uh, use the luxury of of the Himalayas and these mountains here um, but anyways yes so this will be entertaining and one thing that everyone is going to have their mind on everyone's going to have their their sights on I should say is the Zulu or the Zulu 
every single world campaign that I've ever done, the Zulu, have really, really dominated, uh, like to a crazy amount. That is why I included the Boyer as well as Congo, the Congo. Uh, I, I think that both of these sieves could be, I think, automatically right off the bat, they're going to hinder uh, Shaka's growth. Because in the past, you know, he is just dominated because nobody's in South Africa uh, and, and it takes a really long time before him to meet anybody. So uh, usually it's, it's, the, it's Askia of Sunghai. But this time it might be a little bit different. I mean, we might see uh, we might see someone like the Ashanti start to move over. I mean, Ethiopia doesn't have to be as aggressive as they had to in the past because now you know they've got sibs to the south and they don't have to worry about the Zulu as much. I mean, I mean they have to worry about I guess the modded sibs to the south, but the Zulu will not. Any, I don't think we will see the Zulu anywhere near the power they were at before. Now, don't get me wrong. I've discussed this a lot in the past. The Zulu are really, really good because of their MPs. And uh, the AI is able to really use their MPs uh, very well. Very easy for the AI to, to, to dominate with those MPs uh, because, you know, they're, it's, they get two attacks practically. Uh, so I think that they'll still have a chance of maybe taking over the Boyer. Uh, maybe the Congo, depending on exactly what they decide to do uh, here in kind of the northern part of South Africa. But I, it's going to slow them down, and uh, and that's and that's the important thing. Now, one thing to take note of is that the Zulu do start off coastal, so they might grab Madagascar here. Uh, they also are more inclined to maybe colonize. If you're talking about colonization, uh, the Ashanti might be doing a really good job. I think Morocco might have a really good opportunity. Obviously, the Caribbean is a lot closer. The Caribbean is a lot closer to someone like Portugal, but they've got to survive Spain. That's why I didn't want to leave someone out of Iberia. I seriously considered uh, leaving someone out of Iberia. The problem was that I, I, I knew that with this map, uh, with, with kind of Western Europe being so large and enlarged in the map, so large and enlarged, I don't know, I sound dumb. Um, I knew that you know I couldn't leave one of those sieves out. I thought about it, but, uh, but it's really, really important because Portugal would have dominated if there was no Spain uh, just off to their east. So Portugal is going to have to survive at the very least, and then they'll be able to kind of start to jump and and maybe uh, colonize these islands, maybe get into Central America, modern-day Mexico, stuff like that. Uh, looks like we have our first Pathion. Maybe not the first Pathion. Probably not, but we have Arabia choosing Desert Folklore. That is an excellent Pathion for them to grab. Um, yes, because they have obviously a lot of desert. Now, usually that's Egypt picking this up. So that might be a sign that we might not see Egypt as powerful. Let me just make sure that I haven't skipped over um, any any path yet. Yeah, I have skipped. Of, co of course I have. So it looks like Tibet got it up first, I believe. Then it was made. No, it's probably Ethiopia. Ethiopia is really uh, geared towards that Pathion start and the religion start. The religious start. They went for the God King promotion. We have Goddess Protection for Tibet, which is probably a pretty good idea. They're going to be very defensive. Very smart for them to pick up the 30 increase. I think it was Tibet, actually, that picked up the first Pantheon because usually Ethiopia picks this up, this uh, Goddess of Protection, because Ethiopia already naturally gets bonuses to being defensive um, as their unique ability. But anyways, this is very surprising to see Arabia kind of jump out in front of Egypt. Usually it's Egypt picking up de desert folklore, uh, which means that they dominate in northeast Africa. I don't know if we're going to see that as much here. This is that, that, That's kind of a big, a big sign. As well as I'm really, really hoping somebody slaps down a canal city. That would be excellent. Uh, okay, doesn't really matter. Gold's not really going to tell us too much in this campaign. We're turn 25, so that's perfect. Like I said, I think we're going to be about... I would say the first wars might start off in the next 50 turns, uh, just because there are a lot of sieves close to each other. And it also really depends on on how many units certain sieves are building, what what sort of uh, what what they're seeing and stuff like that. Ooh, we've got a friendship, Songhai and Morocco, Declar Declar declaration of friendship. I know that I'm, I'm skipping over some of these diplomatic uh, kind of notifications, and, that, and that's because I, I realize that it's not going to be a super useful thing. I, I can only kind of keep up with all the relationships for so long until... Uh, eventually it just gets super cluttered. So that's why I don't really look at the Declaration of Friendships as much as maybe uh, one would think. So we have our first caravan going from Morocco to Songhai. Uh, well, probably not our first. We've got a few, I'm sure, all around. First religion has been founded. Let's see who it was by. It had to have been by one of the three sieves 
we have looked into, it was Tibet. So Tibet is doing really good religiously. We'll have to look into their unique ability in the next video, uh, as well as their unique units. But um, And we also have Champa choosing God of War, which is going to offer them faith for every battle that they win within four tiles of their city. That's actually a really good Pantheon to get because, I mean, they're going to be fighting probably a lot. The Siamese and Vietnam, always depending. Very interesting. Like I said, this is going to be a, a region of the map that we haven't seen as entertaining in the past, but this will be, I think, very fun to watch, almost as fun as Europe to watch because we have um, so many civs. Philippines, Indonesia, Champa, si si Siam, uh, Vietnam, Tibet, Afghanistan. Um, of course, I mean, the Middle East is always very entertaining to watch with Persia, Assyria, Babylon, uh, Arabia. Now, the first war might break out, and it usually breaks out between the Huns and Russia. That's always kind of the first. I mean, I know that they're not that close to each other compared to the other nations, um, but the Huns are always very aggressive, and for some reason, Russia doesn't always build units. We've only seen, I think, once ever in a campaign where Russia didn't fall to the Huns, so that's something to kind of keep in mind. Uh, but, but then again, it's a different map. Things are going to be a lot different. It's a domination only. We're using mods like the Aggressive Expansive AI mod, as well as the Smarter AI mod, which are mods that we haven't used in the past in scenarios like this. So I could see Catherine having her most successful time ever. Uh, Moscow Moscow is pretty defended with a river to its south. Uh, and then you have the forests kind of blocking Poland. So Russia might have a good opportunity here. Of course, it really depends on who gets up those settlers next. Those settlers will be interesting. Oh, wow, look at that. Austria might be the first out of the European nations to settle. Uh, Sweden also, but Sweden is going to have a, a little bit of a different time. They're going to have to maybe go towards modern-day Norway, which I'm sure they already are. Uh, oh, maybe it's going to be France. We have actually have a lot of settlers going all over the place. We've got Rome, uh, Greece with a settler. Uh, yeah, there we go. I think we might see France settle just about on the coast, which is really, really smart. Uh, because Paris was an inland capital, uh, you do want to have something coastal. There you go. Bam, Orleans has been founded. Uh, that's actually a really excellent pickup. Now, so one thing to keep in mind is that the AIs don't realize what's out there. They have no idea where the land is. They don't know where they're at. Uh, I didn't reveal the map to all the AIs. So they're going to have to kind of fight through the fog of war, and they, uh, they're they going to have to discover things for themselves. But uh, Napoleon got very lucky with that landing because, I mean, that's what you want to do. You want to make sure you've got coastal cities because this will be a colonization game. Mm, Copenhagen, uh, also something to keep in mind. Coastal as well as uh, in this it's very interesting strategical spot, kind of blocking off Sweden and whoever else decides to colonize uh, the Baltic Sea. Persia and Afghanistan have made a declaration of friendship. Okay. And here goes Austria. Now, where? how far is Austria going to move? Now, I think a lot of, a lot of people probably would have assumed that this was going to be German territory. Uh, it's surprising to see the Austrians move so fast with that second settler. I don't even know what Germany is doing. I guess there's a lot of civs that don't have that second settler down just yet. Um, it looks that way. And I want to see where Rome and, and Greece also go with their settlers. Uh, we, we do have islands out here that could be useful for someone like Carthage, Rome, Greece. Uh, we have... Possibly England going over towards like maybe Wales, maybe Scotland. It looks like they're probably going to settle Wales here, which is, again, another very, very smart choice for the AI to do uh, because you do want to be kind of off the coast. You want to try to get to North America because these this is some very uh, resource-heavy lands. I didn't modify this region because if anyone gets here, they deserve the bonuses uh, that they get. So uh, this will be a very important key role in the campaign. And now, like I said... Uh, both sides can kind of equally get to... Ooh, look at that. Molly getting down their second city, too. Both sides, that is, whether it is uh, Japan and East Asia or Europe, Africa, uh, they will have an equal chance of maybe getting over towards uh, the Americas, the New Worlds. But anyways, guys, I'm going to have to stop right there. Uh, if, you, if you if you like this series, if you enjoy uh, this type of content, these AI-only battles, please consider leaving a like. It helps out tremendously. Uh, I haven't been this excited for an AI-only battle for a while. It's uh, I, I love doing the world campaigns. I love everyone having a geographical start. Uh, and I, and I kind of have really high hopes for this one. I think it's going to be really fun because I've included mods. And uh, mods, are, mods are always entertaining to watch. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you guys next time.